Hello everyone, in this lecture we will discuss connectivity in graphs and we will cover the following topics walk, path, circuit, connected and disconnected graphs. Let us start with a walk. A walk in a graph is an alternating sequence of vertices and edges starting and ending in vertices and such that every edge between two vertices in the sequence is instant on the two vertices. It means suppose for example if you start with V1 then you can choose a sequence like this V1, E4, V2, E5, V3. So this is a walk. In, uh, look at this condition. Every edge between two vertices in the sequence is instant on the two vertices. It means you cannot write V1, E6, V2 because E6 is not incident on V2. So you have to choose this word sequence of vertices and edges according to this definition. Now another thing in a walk, a vertex can appear more than one time, but an edge cannot appear more than once. So these are some examples of walks in the graph. Look at this. This is starting with V2, V2, E5, V3, E3, V4, E2, V5, E7 and V2. So this is a closed walk. This first vertex is same as the last vertex. So this is a closed walk. Look at this another V1, E4, V2, E7, V5, V1, E4, V2, E7, V5. So this is first is different. First vertex is different from the last vertex. So this is an example of an open walk. So you can write another walk. If you extend this V2, you can further extend this is E4, V1. So this, this will give you another walk. Now path. An open. Open means the first vertex is different from the last vertex non-intersecting non-intersecting means in between you cannot repeat a vertex so an open non-intersecting walk is called a path alternatively you can say a walk is called a path if no vertex is repeated then the first vertex is different from the last vertex so for this graph these are the examples of paths look at this v2 e5 v3 v2 e5 v3 e3 v4 e2 v5 so this is a path similarly this is example another example of a path a circuit a closed closed means the first vertex is same as the last vertex non intersecting means in between you cannot repeat a vertex so in closed non intersecting walk is called a circuit alternatively you can say a walk is called a circuit if no vertex is repeated and the first vertex is same as the last vertex so in this graph uh, these are some circuits v2 e5 v3 e3 v4 v2 e5 look at this v2 e5 v3 e3 v4 e2 v5 e7 and v2 so there is one circuit similarly you can write v1 e4 v2 e7 v5 e1 v1 so there is another circuit in this way you can write other circuits also now connected and disconnected graphs. A graph is said to be connected if for every pair of vertices there exists a path. We are talking about a path, not about S. So there exists a path between the two vertices. Otherwise the graph is said to be disconnected. Look at this graph. In this graph, for every pair of vertices there exists a path. If you choose C and D, there is no edge between C and D, but there is a path between C and D and this path is C, B, D. You can assign names to these edges. So there is a path between C and D. Similarly, between A and D, there is no edge, but there is a path between A and D. The path is A, B, C. The path is A, C, B, D. So, for every pair of vertices, there exists a path between the two vertices. Therefore, this graph is connected graph. Now, look at this, this graph. There is no path between A and E. No path between A and D. So, this graph is a disconnected graph. Now, a connected subgraph of a graph is called a component. Component means for a disconnected graph, uh, you can find a subgraph which is connected itself. Look at this. This is a connected graph, but this part A, B, C, this is a subgraph which is connected itself. So this is known as components. So for this con disconnected graph, this is first component and this is second component. So this graph has two components. If a graph is connected, look at this graph. It means it has only one component. So for uh, every connected graph, there will be only one component. If a graph is disconnected, then there will be two or more than two components. So if you consider a complete graph of n vertices, complete graph means there exists an edge between every pair of vertices. It means there will be only one component. But if you consider uh, a null graph of n vertices, null graph of n vertices means there is no edge. So there will be n components. 
Now we will discuss some theorems. The first theorem, the graph G is disconnected if and only if its vertex at V is partitioned into two non-empty disjoint sets V1 and V2 such that there exists no edge in G whose one end whose one end vertex is in V1 and another is V2. Look at this, this is biconditional if and only if. This is biconditional P, Q. It means First, you have to assume that P is true, then you have to show that Q is true. Second time, you will assume Q is true, then you will show P is true. So, this is P part. The graph G is disconnected. This is P part and this remaining part is Q. So, let us start with the first part. Let the graph G is disconnected. If the graph is disconnected, it simply means it will have some components. Suppose, for example, two components are there, V1 and V2. Then it will form a partition such that no edge exists between these two components such that uh, there is no no edge in G whose one end is in V1 and another end is in V2. So this is the first part. Now assume let uh, vertex V is partitioned into two non-empty disjoint set V1 and V2 such that there is no edge in G whose one end is in V1 and another end is V2. It means there is no path between this vertex at V1 and this vertex at V2. So it means the graph is disconnected. Now, second theorem, if a graph G is connected or disconnected, has exactly two vertices of odd degree, then there must be a path joining the two vertices. So, this theorem has two parts, one is connected, another is disconnected. So, first start, first assume that the graph G be connected. Now, if the graph is connected, it means there exists a path between every pair of vertices. It means, so if there are two vertices of odd degree, then there will be a path between the two vertices. So, this is the first part for connected graph. Now, assume G is disconnected. If G is disconnected and suppose it had two vertices of odd degree. If G is connected, then it will have two components. For example, suppose uh, two or more than two components. For a simplification, we assume suppose it has two components. First one is, second one is this one. Now, because the graph has exactly two vertices of odd degree. Now, what are the different cases? The two vertices are, uh, maybe possible that two vertices are in first component or the two vertices are in second or one is this uh, first component, other is in second component. Now, look, uh, first uh, we will consider the case when one component is in, uh, one vertex is in one component and other vertex is in another component. Now, what will happen? Now look at this. This is a component. Component means it's a, it basically it is a subgraph and a subgraph is itself a graph. All other vertices are of even degree and there will be only one vertex of odd degree. But we know that the number of vertices, the number of vertices of odd degree in a graph must be even. It means for this component, if there is only one vertex of odd degree, so this is not possible because this will be a contradiction to the previous result. So it means it is not possible that one vertex is in one component and another vertex is in another component. Now, if it is not possible, then what is possible? Then the two vertices are either in first component or in second component. In every case, the two vertices will be in one component only. Now, if the two vertices are in one component and component is a connected graph, then it means there exists a path between the two vertices and this is the proof of the theorem. Now, next theorem, a disconnected graph G, simple graph G without self loops and parallel edges with n vertices and k components can have at most this edges. Now, suppose there are key components in the graph and suppose in the first component there are n1 vertices, in second n2 and finally in kth component there are nk vertices. So in all, if you add all these vertices, this will uh, you will get n. So this is say equation number 1. So n1 plus n2 plus nk equal to n. Now the maximum number of edges, suppose maximum number of edges in the graph is e. Now we have to find the maximum number of edges in the graph. You know for a complete graph of n vertices, the number of edges will be n, n minus 1 by 2 and this is the maximum number of edges in a complete graph of n vertices because a complete graph uh, uh, gives you the maximum number of edges. Without uh, We are considering the graph without self-loop and parallel edges. So that's why we are considering the complete graph. 
So the maximum number of edges in a simple graph with n vertices will be n n minus one by two. So if there are first in if uh, there are n one vertices in first component, then in first component the maximum number of edges will be n one n one minus one by two. Similarly in second n two n two minus one by two and kth component n k n k minus one by two. So if you add all these, then you will get the maximum number of edges in the graph, and this is noted by e. So equal to this expression. Now simplify this. We will get n1 square minus n1, n2 square minus n2. So simplify it. Put all these terms of square here and remaining terms here. So you can write this term as sigma i equal to 1 to k n i square, and this sum is n from 1. This is n. So here equal to sigma i equal to 1 to k n i square minus n by 2. Now we will try to find the expression for this part only. For this part only. Here, just uh, leave it as it is. First, we will try to find the expression for this. For this, we uh, just are taking a simple expression that sigma i equal to one to k n i minus one. We, if we expand this one, then you can write it n one minus one plus n two minus one plus n k minus one. So, if you solve this, n one plus n two plus n k, this will give you n n minus uh, minus one minus one minus one up to k times. This is minus k. So you can write it sigma i equal to one to k n minus one equal to n minus k. Further, you can write this expression as look at this sigma i equal to one to k n minus one n n i minus one. You can write it n one minus one plus n two minus one plus up to n k minus one. This equal to n minus k. Now, if we square both side, square both side means square. Look at this. We are squaring in this way. So uh, basically, there are k terms, one plus two plus k. So if you square all these terms, means first square plus second square plus k uh, up to k th square plus twice first second plus twice second third and up to so on. So if you simplify these expressions, if you simply look at this, n one minus this will be n one minus one square plus n two minus one square plus up to n k minus one square plus Twice n1 minus 1, n2 minus 1 plus twice. So all for all these terms, we can write simply a non-negative term. Suppose this is a. So here we have written for all these terms, uh, which are the product of these two terms, n1 minus twice n1 minus 1, n2 minus 1, and twice n2 minus 1, n3 minus 1. So for all these terms, these are non-negative terms. So we have written a simply one thing, a non-negative term. We are not going to write all these terms. So now for this. If you expand this, look at this. What will you get? N1 square plus 1 minus 2 N1. Similarly, for N2 square plus 1 minus 2 N2 minus 2 N2 and so on. So if you put all these in uh, N1 square plus N2 square all together, then first term will be sigma i equal to 1 to k N i square, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 k times this is k N. Look at this. If you put these terms, minus 2n1, minus 2n2, and finally minus 2nk, if you put all these together, then you will get minus 2 sigma i equal to 1 to k ni. And this is a non-negative term, means product of these uh, two terms. This equal to n minus k whole square. Now look at this. This is a non-negative term. It means if you remove this term from this expression, then this equal this equal sign uh, sign will be changed into Inequality. This is less than equal to because we have removed this term, non-negative term. Now for this remaining part, i equal to one to k n i square plus k minus. This is equal to n, so two n. Now this is less than equal to n minus k square because we have eliminated this non-negative term. So from there you can find the value of sigma i equal to one to k n i square. This is less than equal to n minus k square, and if you put k minus two n. Here in right hand side, this will be two n minus k. Now from this, you now we have the value of i equal sigma i equal to one to k n i square. Put this value here in equation number two, then you will get e less than equal to half n minus k square plus two n minus k minus n. If you simplify this, then you will get e less than equal to n minus k n minus k plus one by two. It means the maximum number of as is. In a disconnected simple graph G with n vertices and k components will be n minus k, n minus k plus one by two. So this is the proof of the theorem. So.
so i hope that you got the concept of connectivity in graphs and now you understand all these theorems